Welcome back. With nine Academy Award nominations and Brad Pitt starring and producing, you'd expect a blockbuster, but it's not always the case particularly if the subject matter is slavery. I would say it's never the case. No. But 12 Years a Slave is based on the true story of an African-American who was born a free man in New York in the early 1800s before being sold into slavery in his 30s. To mm. our movie man, Jason Jabba Davis, always good to see you. What did you think? <sighs> Full wow. on. Really? Yeah, yeah. A Probably the heaviest film that I've ever seen. Really? Um, yeah, and it, it makes you think back to the Golden Globes when um, Amy Poehler made the comment, she, you know, I'm, I'm glad I saw that film. I'll never look at slavery in the same way again. And uh, Tina Fey said, how were you looking at slavery yeah. in the first place? And yeah. it's often the only way we can deal with the subject matter as completely deep as slavery and the injustice that was committed to hundreds of thousands of people. Um, I love a, a film based on a true story. It's been a very heavy week. Also saw Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, oh, yeah. which we'll review next week on the show. But few stories can compare to the plight of the slaves in America. Uh, 12 Years a Slave tells the story of Solomon Northup, played by Chuatel Ijefor. Uh, he's born a free man in Saratoga Springs in New York in 1808, where slavery had been outlawed. He was kidnapped, renamed simply Platt, sold into slavery in Washington in 1841. And the wow. story, the film basically is the 12 years Years of his life where he's in slavery. There's mm. a, uh, a young lady there uh, who plays the role, Patsy, a slave, uh, Lapita Nyongo, who uh, is nominated as well for an Academy Award. Nine Academy Award nominations for this film, and no wonder it is. The subject matter is is so intense. You say it's you know very heavy, you know intense. Um, is is it Exhausting, enjoyable? Yeah. You know, uh, look thoroughly enjoyable. Um, I don't normally go and see movies, you know, of that nature. I like Robocop and uh, Terminator and kind mm. of more throwaway things and sci-fi and comedy and that kind of thing. I mean, this one is a really stark film, uh, like Philomena was, you know, about orphans and adoption and, and the church there. The treatment of these people is so far removed from what we consider, you know, appropriate behaviour and, and obviously has been. So let's take a look right now at 12 Years a Slave. So you settle into your role as Platt then? My back is thick with scars for protesting our freedom. Do not accuse me. I, I accuse you of nothing. I cannot accuse. I have done dishonorable things to survive, and for all of them, I have ended up here. Uh, yeah, I, I, an incredible film. And you, you say, Andrew, you know, why would you bother kidnapping someone, you know, when, when, you when so many slaves were available? Anyway. Commerce. Yeah, you know, there was a yeah. trade in slaves and it was so difficult in 1841 to prove who you were and you yeah. take someone from New York and ship them down south and yeah. sell them into slavery. Four and a half stars for 12 wow. years of slave. Very hard not to see this taking out uh, Best Picture at the Academy Awards, Best Adapted Screenplay. The, every single word in this film is so beautifully nuanced. Mm. It's an incredible must-see film. Reminiscent okay. of Weekend at Bernie's too. Definitely, <laughs> yeah, sense. or Flying High. Well, yeah, it's funny you go. should say that because our next one <laughs> yeah, is a... about as far removed from that, right? Well, the only connection, I guess, there's five Oscar winners uh, in our next film, which is a light piece of fluff. It's not out until next week. Um, there we go, a bit of red foo. Um, five Oscar winning actors working together for the first time. A comedy about three 60-something friends. This, of course, is Last Vegas. They take a break from their day-to-day -day lives to throw a bachelor party in Vegas for their last remaining single pal. Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Klein. You can imagine this being pitched. Bang. I mean, Michael Douglas and a fifth Academy Award uh, winner, Mary Steenburgen, as Diana, who's a lounge singer that spark uh, re-sparks a rivalry between two of the guys. Really Fun? just, yeah, just silly, you know, funny fluff. I'm not sure if we've got time to take a quick look at it. There's, there's bound to be a couple of gags in here. Let's have a look. <laughs> Hello. Hey, it's Billy. Billy! How are you doing? What's going on? I got something important here, all right? I'm getting married. What? Uh, wow. To that young lady who's half your age? Hey, wait, wait a minute. She's almost 32. I have a hemorrhoid that's almost 32. So we're going to have a bachelor party in Vegas. I, I can't smoke, drink, eat salt, or stay out past nine, but... All right, I love it. Maybe I should just stay home. No, you don't have to do that. Your only job is to relax. It's one of the biggest uh, gags in the film, and of course, they've revealed that in the trailer. Three stars for Las Vegas. If you want to switch off, uh, 50 Cent makes a cameo in there. Jerry Ferrara, Turtle from Entourage as well, makes a great uh, play oh, great. as yeah. a Vegas brat. Yeah. So some good fun to contrast 12 Years a Slave. Sort of which a retirement hangover. Exactly right. The hangover for granddads. Yeah, cool. Funny. That looks good. All right, thanks, thanks Jeff. Guys. Good on you. Still to come, Melbourne's Yellow Sea.
What city siders make of Melbourne's secret sunflower patch.